All right, so in this example, um, basically when you guys are graphing, all right, there's a couple things we need to know. First of all, we need to know all of the important information, okay? So the important information is everything I gave you guys. Oops, let's change this to cosine. Okay, amplitude, absolute value of 0.5. Absolute value of 0.5, amplitude is 0.5, okay? Um, the next thing is the period. 2 pi divided by 3. Well, I can't really do anything with that, all right? So that's 2 pi divided by 3. The next thing is the x scale. So um, when graphing, I would recommend you guys using the x scale. x scale is basically when you take your period, divide it by 4. So 2 pi divided by 3 divided by 4. Again, we have a fraction divided by a number. Convert your number to a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. Right? You're going to get used to fractions. I will say that. We are going to be doing a lot of fraction operations. Yes? What for? It is 4 over 1. It was 4. I converted it to 4 over 1, so I had multiplied by the reciprocal. You could, have, you could have not left it as 4 over 1, just multiply by the reciprocal. That's fine. But I was just showing you guys where the reciprocal came from. Okay, the next thing is to kind of find the start and um, the end, or which we call the phase shift. I call that the initial period start in your notes. Um, but that's going to be kind of like where the initial period starts. All you do for that is do bx minus c equals 0. But in this case, I just do 3x is equal to 0. Well, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 0. So therefore, my initial period is going to start at 0. And is there any vertical translation? Am I adding or subtracting anything outside of my function? No. So I would just say none. Is everybody OK with that? So if we're going to graph cosine, you guys need to remember what cosine looked like. So in your notes, I gave you guys like a quick little graph of, co of the initial period of cosine. So we know that cosine went up to 1 <clears throat> and went down as low as 1, negative 1 had a period of 2 pi, and it had an x scale of pi halves. This is all in your notes. It was also in your book if you needed an extra reference. And if you guys remember, the initial period started at 1, then went down to the x-intercept, down to the minimum, back up to the intercept, and back up. That was the initial period. Correct? So that's what we know our graph is going to look like that. And we know we can just keep on competing it, repeating it. Now, I only asked you guys to do two periods. So you can always do the initial period and then continue another period. So if I was going to graph cosine. Now the difference is cosine had an amplitude of 1. The parent graph has an amplitude of 1. So if my new amplitude is 0.5, that means now, if that's 1, now my graph is going to only go up to 0.5. Does everybody see that? OK. What is my new period? My new period is 2 pi over 3, right? So I'm going to do one complete period is going to end here. And then we'll do the other one. Now, the x scale is pi over 6. All right. So what that means is basically the distance between each of these terms is pi over 6. Now, what might be helpful for you guys is to rewrite 2 pi over 3 in terms of 6. Do you guys agree with me that's the same thing as? 4 pi over 6? Yes? OK. So that means halfway would be 2 pi over 6. So therefore, that would be pi over 6. And over there, that would be 3 pi over 6. So a lot of times when you guys are having difficulty with fractions, I would recommend writing out the x scale and writing out every term in terms of the x scale. However, when you are graphing something, we don't really write 2 pi over 6, right? We would simplify that to pi over 3. Or if you were to look at a graph on like a test, it wouldn't be 2 pi over 6. It would be pi over 3. This would be pi halves, right? But if I continued, this is nice to keep it this way, though, because can I figure out what the next scale is? Yeah. 5 pi over 6, right? Then 6 pi over 6, 7 pi, and 8 pi. So there's four, one, two, three, four, four terms in the next period. Here's one period. 
So one, two, three, let's go a little bit farther. Four, so this is five pi over six, six pi over six, seven pi over six, and eight pi over six. So we'll leave that there. That's just pi. That's seven pi over six, and that's four pi over three. Does everybody see how I got my scaling? So I used the x scale and then just reduced it to actually get my scales. OK? Yes? So we know what the, yes? Um, the amplitude is 0.5. So I know the amplitude is 0.5, so how do you know where to put that on there? Like you put it in between the Well, the amplitude, since my graph is not being shifted up or down, first of all, since my graph is not being shifted up or down at all, the amplitude, remember, is the half distance from the maximum to the min. So that it's basically from the x-axis to the top. So if my amplitude's 0.5, that means that's how high my graph is going to go, as long as there's no transformation up and around. Yes? If we wanted to, could we just do the initial period and then do the initial period, but like negative? Negative, absolutely. And I'll do an example of that later. So you could just do it twice, or yeah, you could do initial period here and then do it the other way, right? Where everything would just be exactly the same but negative. So now we're just going to copy this graph. The first point for cosine on the initial period was the max. Then it went to the minimum. I'm sorry, intercept, minimum, intercept, max. And then we just got to repeat it. Yes? OK. Yes? Huh? Period. Right. As long as the phase shift is 0. We find the phase shift. We set whatever's inside of there equal to 0. So we can make so that's where it tells us our initial period starts at zero. Remember, this graph goes on and on forever in both directions, right? So we're just we're just picking a part to start at. So we pick the part what the phase shift is, where we set whatever's inside of our function equal to zero, and that tells us where we can start our initial period. Yes. So uh, say you have to shift your graph up three, can you just add points? Yeah, I just add three to every point. Okay. Yep. So now then I go back, then I just continue again. Intercept, minimum. Intercept, maximum. And that's all I was expecting you guys to be able to do. Two periods. Do you guys see how this is two full periods? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes? That's what I was expecting you guys to do that. Yes? So if we, like you said, when you 